So today we're going to be solving leap code number 200. It's called number of islands. And um, you can see that in the last six months, it's been really popular at Amazon, Bloomberg, Microsoft, Facebook. It seems like companies really like to ask this question. And I can see why. It, it really touches on a lot of fundamentals that... Um, uh, that really can show, um, you know, there's a lot of bugs in here, so it, it can really be a good way to kind of gauge someone's coding ability. But we'll go through it. It's not too bad. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at the prompt here. Given an M by N 2D grid map of ones land and zeros water, return the number of islands. An island is surrounded by water and is formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally or vertically. You may assume all four edges of the grid are all surrounded by water. Okay, so here we have example one. We have a grid, and we can see we have a one here, we have a one here, one here, one here, a one here, one, 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 one. And so we have one island based on all these ones here, and then the zeros are water, so the output is one. So here in example two, we can see that we have one, two, three, four uh, ones here. So that's one island. This is a lone one. It does have a diagonal, but we're not counting that. We're only counting anything above uh, to the right, left, or below. So we have a second island here. And then we have a third island here because there's nothing above or to the left of it. And uh, there is something to the right of it. So this um, is one island here. So this will be one two, and three islands. Okay, so one of the things that's uh, really important with this question is to really think of it as a graph, uh, graph problem. Um, and we're using a grid, so we're using a matrix, an adjacency matrix versus an adjacency list uh, for something like this. And what we want to do is we want to go through each node here, each cell, and just do a traverse, like just, just do a breadth first or a depth first traverse and find out where all the ones are, and then we can just traverse to the next node and next node and next node. Now, we don't, we don't wanna go through every single cell over and over again, so what we can do is create an auxiliary visited grid where if we've already been to this particular cell, we can just put in a Boolean, uh, true or false, and that way we can check, you know, zero, zero, okay, we can traverse this entire, uh, from this entire node and get all the ones that it's connected to. When we then go to the next node, or the next cell here, um, in uh, index zero and one, uh, we've already visited this. We've already visited this, we already visited this, and then we can start back here at zero and then traverse. And again, we wouldn't traverse this because there's not a one there. Um, so what we can do is first, uh, we can just go ahead and create our auxiliary array. Uh, for visited. So I'll do const visited and then we have a grid here. We can just map this, map each row. And then with uh, within each row we have another map and this is each cell. And we can just fill it with false. So all we're doing here is we're basically creating a copy of the grid and we're just filling it in with false. So we have a complete carbon copy of this, uh, but just with, with all the values uh, being false. Okay, so now we want to create a, a global variable which will count the number of islands. So we can do a let island count equals zero, and that'll just count uh, the number of times we're traversing uh, through this grid. And each time we traverse that, we can just keep a running record of the count. And then at the end, we can just return this. Return island count. Okay, and then this is where the meat of our problem is going to be. So we're going to basically just traverse through this matrix. So we can do a for let i equals zero, i is less than grid dot length, i plus plus, and then we can do a for let j equals zero as well j is less than grid of i dot length and j plus plus. Okay, and then, then what we all we want to do is we want to check if the depth first search is returning a true, uh, true or false. So we can just put in i and j, the grid, and visit it. And if this depth 
first search traversal returns true, that means that we have an island uh, uh, in that particular node. And we can just go ahead, island count plus plus. Um, and if it's not, then we just we just skip it. We just don't we don't increment island count. Okay, so that's for the main function. That's all we got. It's not too bad. Uh, it's pretty much that's it. And so then we want to just go ahead and um, create a depth first search um, uh, helper function here. So we can do uh, takes in an I, takes in a J, takes in the grid, and takes in the visited. Visited, okay. And what we want to do here, so when we're doing depth first, I always try to remember this um, with queues and stacks. So anytime you're doing a depth first search, uh, just think like a good way to remember it is like data science. So depth, depth first search, DS, it's going to be a stack. Okay, so um, you just create a stack. And that'll be, um, that'll take in the I and the J. Okay. Um, so anytime we do a depth first search traversal, we typically want to use a stack. You can do it recursively, but uh, I'll just use a stack here. Um, just It's just a little bit more clear when it's uh, done iteratively. Um, and then for a breadth first search, you want to use a queue. Okay, so here we have uh, our stack, and then we can just keep track of the island size. So we can just do a let island size. We'll set it to zero, and then we can do while uh, stack dot length. Okay, so while we have something there, we'll just pull out that current node. We'll pop off that current node, so we can do a let cur node equal stack dot pop. Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to destructure out the i and the j that's in the current node. So um, a good way to do this just do i j, and then we can do cur node and just go ahead and pull out that i and j. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to do uh, three things. First, we want to check, is this particular cell, have we visited it? Is it in this visited uh, auxiliary grid that we made? Um, if it's visited, we don't want to do anything else. We just want to skip it, right? So we can just do um, check if visited at i and j, right? So we can just do if visited of i and j if that's true then we just continue continue right and then of course we want to go ahead and add this visited of i and j and just go ahead and um, add that into into the visited uh, array okay and then what we want to do is we we want to make sure that when we are at this particular cell that there's a one there if there's a zero there, we, we don't need to do anything. We can just go ahead and skip that as well, right? So what we want to do is we want to check if cell is an island component or P-O-N-E-N-T. I cannot, I'll just, I'll just say uh, island um, is part of an island. And Okay, and so we can just do if uh, grid at index i at index j equals zero, which means it's not an island. Okay, we can also continue. Continue, right? And then if, it, if it's a one, then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and increment this island size, right? Because it is a piece of land. And we just want to do island size plus plus, right? Now, what we want to do is if we hit a one here, then we want to check uh, everything from the right of it, the left of it, uh, above it, if there is a cell above it, and to the um, left of it as well. So we want to check everything adjacent to that particular cell. So what we can do here is we can just, um, we can create an array. So we can say, uh, let um, adjacent neighbors equal, and then we'll do a helper function here. We'll just do a get adjacent 
neighbors and we'll toss in the I, toss in the J, toss in the grid and the visited. And then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and um, push that, push all those adjacent neighbors into the stack. Okay, so we can do stack dot push and then we'll just use the spread operator here and just go ahead and um, toss in those adjacent neighbors. Okay, so that'll go ahead and get um, all of our adjacent neighbors uh, from that helper function into the stack. And then what we want to do is we want to check after doing all that, do we have an island size? Like do after we did that traversal, is there an island there? So it's, you know, we can just say, just return if, uh, we'll just do island size is greater than zero, then return true, else we'll return false. Okay, and so that's all we gotta do for the traversal. That will traverse out through that particular cell. It'll check uh, if there's any islands there, any pieces of land there, and then it'll say how big that island is. And then it'll just return a Boolean if we have an island there or not. Okay, and then one last thing we need to do is we just need to go ahead and create the helper function for get adjacent neighbors. Okay, so we can do const get adjacent neighbors. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and take in the i, the j, uh, the grid, and um, visited. Okay, and so then we can just create an array uh, for adjacent neighbors. Okay, and then so now we have to get um, the four neighbors, the uh, every neighbor above the cell, below the cell, to the left of the cell, and to the right of the cell. And we need to um, push those all into this adjacent neighbors and just go ahead at the end, return adjacent neighbors. And this, this, this can be a little tricky here. Um, uh, so you just wanna make sure when you get to this part to really really make sure you you think about every line of code that you're writing because it's it's this is a really um, uh, easy way to get bugs uh, during this part so here we have I we can say if I is uh, greater than zero okay so if I this is gonna be our I at the index uh, it's gonna be our uh, vertical line here so this is gonna be zero one two three if i is greater than zero, so if i is greater than zero, that means um, we are on the second index, okay? Or we're on the first index. Um, that means that there is a cell above it. If i is zero, then there's nothing above it. And so that's why we wanna check if, make sure that i is above zero, and we have not visited uh, this, particular, this particular cell right here. It can't be visited, because if we already visited, then we don't need to, we don't need to do anything there. So we can just write, if it is not visited at i plus one, okay? Uh, no, I'm sorry, i minus one, okay? Because we're checking uh, above it, and j. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do adjacent, adjacent uh, neighbors dot push. And then we wanna put in a duple here. We wanna put in an i minus one and then the jth index okay so we want to put in a duple array right here okay now we can just essentially do the same thing for uh, below or something similar we can just do if um, I is less than grid dot length minus one okay and the reason it's grid dot length minus one is that we want to get, we want to check if this is I, we want to make sure that there is something below it here. Okay, so if we are at grid dot length minus one, so we're at zero, one, two, three, we want to make sure that our, our uh, I index is at the index of two. That way there is something uh, below it to check. And then we just want to check visited of i plus one and j is false that we don't have anything there and if, if there's nothing if we have not visited that then we go ahead and push that into uh, our adjacent neighbors 
neighbors of i plus 1 and j. Okay, uh, let's push that in there. Okay, so we have our adjacent neighbors here. We push uh, this, um, it's not a duple, it's just an array uh, of i plus 1 and j. Okay, and that takes care of our um, uh, our elements that are below below our target um, our target cell, and now we just want to do the same thing for uh, for J. We just go ahead and flip flip this all for J. We just toss in a J here, J here. Grid of it's going to be index zero, length minus one, right? And then we just want to go ahead and flip this. Instead of i plus 1, we want to do j plus 1. And instead of i plus 1 here, we want to do j plus 1. And uh, same thing here. Instead of i minus 1, we want to do j minus 1. And again, here, instead of i minus 1, we want to do j minus 1. OK? And that should, that should, um, that should be it, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And let's see, const visited, visited grid is not defined. Oh, GERD, <laughs> grid, G-R-I-D, there we go. Okay, and then visited here is, uh, let's see, V-I-S-I-T-E-D, there we go. I wanna make sure we spell things correctly, and we are good, yeah. So it's not great on runtime and memory usage. This is more of a brute force way of solving this. You can do this um, in a more um, performant way. And the way you'd want to do that, and something to think about, is, is instead of creating this auxiliary grid here, what you can do is go ahead and flip these values on each iteration. right? So you, you can change these ones to zeros. And if you do that, then you don't need to create an auxiliary grid. You can just use the input grid. But then you are changing the input. Um, so that's also something something to think about. But yeah, that is island, number of islands. It's a great problem to know. I'd highly suggest um, uh, being familiar with this pattern. Um, as you can see, uh, um, you know, there's there's a lot of other, other questions that uh, show up at interviews that really you know, you use this pattern. So it's a good one to be familiar with. Uh, okay.